alternative to cash is exploding in value, will it last? Many financial experts dismissed the cryptocurrency as a fad and thought it would ultimately prove worthless. At the end of the day, Friday, its value was over $55,000. Elon Musk, the CEO of Tesla, recently bought $1.5 billion of Bitcoin and said his company will accept it as payment for its electric cars. MasterCard, Apple Pay, among others, are now allowing it to be used as a form of payment. What's driving this extreme bull market? And is it now a safer investment? January 6, 2018, I hosted a debate on this program between a Bitcoin bear and a Bitcoin bull. That morning, Bitcoin was worth around $17,000. Two years earlier, Vivek Wadwa, a tech entrepreneur and author, had declared Bitcoin dead and is sticking to his guns at least then. I think that it's the greatest scam of modern times. Bitcoin is never going to be a digital currency. It's simply going to implode before you know it. And regular people who trust you are going to lose their shirts. Dan Moorhead, founder of the first Bitcoin-focused hedge fund, defended the currency. I'm a trader. I can never be sure of anything as you are as, as a writer. But when, you, when that piece was written, that was two years ago. And since then, $100,000 in Bitcoin would be worth $4.5 since Bitcoin has more than tripled in the intervening three years and Pantera Bitcoin Fund is up more than 69,000 percent, I, of course, had to invite both men back to check in. Dan Moorhead, who started his career at Goldman Sachs, is founder and CEO of Pantera Capital. Vivek Wadwa is a distinguished fellow at Harvard Law School's Labor and Work Life Program. His most recent book is From Incremental to Exponential, How Large Companies Can See the Future and Rethink Motivation. Vivek, I think Dan is probably here for a victory lap. If that's true, <laughs> is it premature? Michael, uh, when is the last time you bought a pizza with Bitcoin? Never. When is the last time anyone watching this used Bitcoin to transact commerce? Practically never. In the old days, there are stories about people buying you know, bit pizza with Bitcoin, but we don't use it as a digital currency anymore. What it is right now is a speculative asset. It's as valuable as casino chips are, and it's exactly what this is. Now, the argument will be that uh, Bitcoin will reach $100,000. Could, it could reach half a million dollars, or it could be down to $5,000. We don't know. Just like GameStop, it's really GameStop on steroids, 10x greater than GameStop. And the difference between GameStop and Bitcoin is that GameStop had you know, a bunch of uh, nerds and, and geeks and good people uh, who had no experience in uh, finance behind it. This has professional investors. It has you know, tech moguls who are pouring billions into it. But what happens is that they pour billions into it, the price rises, they cash out, take their profits, and you know, you've got the zealots like my friend Dan who persuade everyone and you know, new investors to come in and buy it. And they lose their shirts and they leave, you know, bankrupt and crying, whereas the rich got richer and then they buy it again after the price drops and it, then it falls again. So the common man, the common person loses no matter what happens here and the rich keep getting richer. Dan, Friday night happens to be pizza night in our house. Last night I used cash. Does Vivek have a point that until and unless it reaches a degree where Bitcoin is used to buy the Friday night pie, we don't have anything here? No, Bitcoin does dozens of different use cases from digital gold to cross-border money movement to uh, all kinds of things. And really the last thing it will do is be good for buying a pizza. Actually, the first commercial transaction with Bitcoin was a developer who bought uh, pizza with 10,000 Bitcoin. And that's worth uh, $500 million, $5 billion today. So that's why people don't use it to buy things at the moment because it's appreciating at such a rapid rate. Um, and, and those arguments have been made uh, by the very small percentage of people who are negative on cryptocurrencies, but it's really being used. 7% of cross-border money movement from the U.S. to Mexico goes over Bitcoin. We recently sold a company in the Philippines uh, that has one out of every 10 adults in the country using Bitcoin. So Bitcoin's being used, and the uh, investors that are investing in it today aren't investing in it because it's great for buying a cup of coffee today. They're investing in it because it's going to disrupt finance, payments, all these industries. And 10 years from now, it will be good for buying a cup of coffee. Vivek, why are you unpersuaded, given the news that Bank of New York, Mellencore, which is the nation's largest bank, or Tesla, 
or PayPal or Apple Pay. There seem to be so many vendors, maybe not a pizza yet, but so many vendors that are recognizing it as a form of currency they'll accept. Yeah, there's a fear of missing out right now. And that's how bubbles go. The big tulip, the Dutch tulip bubble, it was the same way. So now, you know, but, and the difference over here is that you've got intelligent, sophisticated investors, you know, billionaires. I mean, uh, Elon Musk spending a billion and a half dollars of his company's money, which comes from uh, the public, which comes from tax breaks on, the, on a casino. That's the type of behavior you have. And these people could inflate it a lot more. I was also watching GameStop the same way. I said, oh, my God, God, uh, there's no telling where this thing goes. This could be worth a trillion dollars, just like uh, Bitcoin is, or it could go bust. And guess what? It went bust. The same thing could happen with Bitcoin. We don't know. I mean, uh, like I said, uh, right now, I would bet it would be a, a go to $100,000 in the next few weeks, the way it's going. But what happens after that? It's going to drop again. And again, the people who bought it at $100,000 are going to lose their life savings. And, and the rich who sold it are going to you know, put the profits away and then reinvest it in it, and, and it's going to go up again. It's a game. Hey, hey, Dan, Dan, everything I know about the markets, I learned by watching Wall Street. It's like, it's like Vivek is the Lou Mandheim character who advises Bud Fox, hey, it's all about fundamentals, kid. Don't ever lose sight of that. I don't know if you know the movie reference, but respond to what you just heard. Yeah, you know, it's, it's actually funny. Pantera's previous investment prior to Bitcoin was an investment in Tesla Motors in 2011. I heard all of the same arguments. It's just a car company. There hasn't been a car company go public in the United States since Ford Motor Company went public. It's just Tesla and Elon Musk fanboys that buy the stock. It's disrupting transportation. It's disrupting power generation. It's disrupting power storage. So Tesla now is, is, is you know, kind of safe from criticisms, like Vivek has, has said. The criticisms um, of Bitcoin are, you know, essentially all the same. And in one of his previous uh, papers, he said Bitcoin is the pets.com of this era. And I think that's a great analog. The major investor in pets.com invested in a bunch of ideas to help people use these new technologies to what's now called the Internet. And some didn't work, you know, the sock puppet never really figured out logistics. But the investor in pets.com is a guy named Jeff Bezos and his company is doing pretty well. It really disrupted a lot of things. And that's basically what's happening with Bitcoin. Vivek, you get the final 10 seconds, go ahead. Okay, what happens if, uh, you know, Elon Musk CFO loses his uh, password for the $1.5 billion he has? That's gonna to go, to go down the toilet. That's the risk with Bitcoin, that it's all based on passwords. Computers can be hacked. You know, Elon Musk doesn't remember the password for the $1.5 billion. <clears throat> Someone in his company does. And it's easy as that to steal money like that. So it'll take one fall like that for this thing to crash and burn. Gentlemen, I appreciate both of you, and I will definitely invite you back. Thank you so much. Thank you, my friend. Thank you. From the world.